The Spiritual Fornication of Babylon. This is part three of the Babylon series. In part one of this series on Babylon, uh, we saw that Babylon is the end time overall Christian church. Um, so we're going to look today at one of the most primary features of that end time Christian church during the Great Tribulation, which is that of spiritual fornication. Um, so we have a study on our website, therockofoffense.com, if you want to look at this in more detail. And also, we would uh, encourage you to please subscribe if you find these videos of value. And uh, we're going to move on in our study. Thank you. Okay, let's move on in our study and read Revelation 17, Babylon's Harlotry. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have, have committed fornication. So the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet covered beast and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup, a golden cup in her hand, full, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So we see in that passage uh, the, the reference to harlotry. So in the Bible, when we see harlotry, whoredom, fornication, all those words are, are they're all the same word, in whether the New Testament in the Greek, it's porneia, where we get the word pornography from, or in the Hebrew, the word zana. And it's used many times throughout both the New and Old Testament. It's amazing how many times it's used about this. But when you see the words harlotry, whoredom, fornication, it's all the same base word. And it, it'll, as we're going to find out shortly, it spiritually refers to the worship of other gods and idols. Okay, so the key issues that we saw in Revelation 17 and 18. First, we have to answer the question, what is spiritual fornication? Second, we see that Babylon is re referred to as the mother of other harlots and, and the abominations of the earth. And we find that Babylon commits fornication with the kings of the earth. With the kings of the earth is her fornication directed at. But the inhabitants also of the earth, which is everybody else, is made drunk, made to be just not in their right mind because of the wine of her fornication. And we're going to look at what that spiritually means. And we see that she has a cup full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So we're going to look at those concepts in the slides that follow. Okay, first, spiritual fornication. Let's understand clearly by looking at the scriptures what that is. And here's some examples of Old Testament Israel, which was the church in the wilderness. And we see that this concept always refers to the worship of other gods and idols. Leviticus 17, 7, And they, which is Israel, shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a-whoring. It's going after devils and other, other gods. Leviticus 25, I will set my face against that man that goes to commit whoredom with Moloch. Moloch was a false god, a symbol of Satan. It was a symbol of what was not true about God. Number 15, remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you go a whoring. We see here the whoring or the, the fornication. It's things that are devised in our own heart, in our own eyes. It's things that we see with our eyes. It's the things of this world. Psalm 106. Thus they were defiled with their own works. Our own works can, can cause us to go whoring with our own inventions or ideas. When we, when we look for our way rather than God's way, that's spiritual fornication, and we're going after other gods and idols. Okay, here's some more verses of spiritual fornication concerning Judah. Judah was the southern two tribes. Jerusalem was the capital within Judah. And we see here uh, three verses. First, Ezekiel 6, 9, I am broken with their whorish heart, which has departed from me, and with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols. Instead of being focused on God and God's way and God's word and, and God's ceremonies that were in the Old Testament, they went a whoring after idols about other things, other gods and other things or other interests. 
Jeremiah 2.20, upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot. That's where they did a harlotry or, or idol worship was under every green tree. Uh, Jeremiah 3.1, thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. And many. It wasn't just one incident, one mistake. We all make mistakes. We're human beings. But it was with many. It was their normal course of life. And then they try to return to God and say that, well, I'm God's people, but I'm doing all this other, other harlotry. So we see that just doesn't work. Okay, so we saw both in the Old Testament, the northern ten tribes of Israel and the southern two tribes of Judah, that they both committed fornication. And Israel in general was the church in the wilderness, Acts 7.38. And we find in Isaiah 1, how is the faithful city, which is Jerusalem, become a harlot? And, and Jerusalem is a, a symbol for the church. It's the focus or the, the headquarters of where God's law went from. But it became a harlot. It was full of judgment, righteousness, but, but, but it changed. Now they're murderers. It, it became corrupt after their own lust and desires. Jeremiah 3.8, And I saw when all the causes were backsliding, Israel committed adultery. I had put her away. God divorced Israel and gave her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah, the southern two tribes, they didn't fear, but they went and played the harlot as well. So both Israel and Judah played the harlot. And that's what spiritual fornication is. It's going after other gods and idols. Ezekiel 16, 17. Thou hast also taken the, thy fair jewels of my gold and my silver, which I have given thee, the precious things of God, which is the, the word of God and the treasures of knowing Christ. And instead they made themselves images of men and did commit whoredom with them. They, they were all together after idols. They, they, they corrupted the true meaning, the spiritual meaning of, of the gold and the silver, and they went after worldly idols. Okay, so, and there's many, many, many verses in our, uh, in our website. We have listed all those verses on spiritual fornication. But we're going to look now, we're going to try to relate this to today a little bit. So we're going to look at these categories. And when we look at Revelation 17, 4, uh, we, we see the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet cover, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness. And we see... And, and for all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication, and wine points of judgment. And we, we see that in this, this verse is really a quotation from Jeremiah 51, where it's talking about Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. And that word mad in Jeremiah 51, 7 is literally the word in the Hebrew halal, which means to glory or praise. And it's used in Jeremiah 9, verse 23 and 24 in a very interesting way, where we read, Let not the wise man glory, or halal, same word used in Jeremiah 51 as mad, let the wise man not glory or be crazy about his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory or be mad about his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord, which exercise love and kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So, But we see those three things where, where, where people are crazy about. They glory in their wisdom, they glory in their might or power or strength, and they glory in riches. So let's just take that a step further and look at how that applies to us today. So let's relate Jeremiah 9 which is tied to Jeremiah 51, which is quoted in Revelation 17. So let's look at those three categories as mo in a modern way. Wisdom, might, and riches. And, and they gloried in them or they were crazy about them in place of God. So too in the, in the book of Revelation, Babylon, that's how it's going to be at the end time. And we see, for example, wisdom. So some modern examples would be media of all types. Where do we get our knowledge from? Where do we get our, our information? Well, it's, it's the internet. It's, it's the, the TV. It's, it's the news. It's authors. It's blogs. It's psychology, self-help books. It's the New Age movement, a bunch of odd wisdom that comes from that and false teaching in the church. Books, science, having, having academic degrees, all this man's wisdom we see all around us and people worship that 
Might, the second one. Well, we're, what, what, what's powerful today? How do we worship might today? Well, the most obvious one is politics. We, 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 we elect political leaders. We follow intently politics, sports. It's a battle. Who's going to win one against the other? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a game, but when one becomes obsessed with that, it, it's about who's going to win, who's better. And that's true of warfare and guns and beauty, fashion. It's used as a tool. Who's better? Who's more beautiful? Um, social media it has become very powerful. How many followers does one have? How many friends does one have? Sex. Sex is a powerful tool. Churches. There's all type of structure in churches and control that happens in churches. Business, organizational titles, power, reaching one's promotions, um, having a title in front of your name, authority, awards, achievements. All these things have to do with power and might. Riches, gluttony, having too much of stuff, material possessions, stocks, eating too much, having too much food, having too much cars worshiping your 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 things spending all your time on your material possessions instead of on with god and there's so many examples having pleasure spending your time having fun having vacations fl flaunting your wealth alcohol drugs it's it's it, it, it's a it's a it, it has takes money to buy that stuff it's it's a way to have pleasure okay and we see that babylon is the mother of harlots she has that right on her name, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And what that means is that the mother, the mother church, the, the, the overall church organizational power, if you will, which comes in many different denominations, but there, she breeds other harlots. There's all type of daughter churches that, that come out. There's literally thousands of Christian beliefs and, and churches and denominations and factions and sects and all these things that have come out of the, the original christian church and the abominations it, 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 the abominations we did a study on the abomination of desolation which i'll tag on this slide but they're they're false gods and idols they're the same as spiritual fornication it's abominations and we see that defined here in revelation uh, and we see, for example, the graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire, for it is an abomination unto the Lord. The, the, gra the, the gods of the Old Testament, which we see in graven images, and again, our graven images today are material things that we own, that we worship, we, that we spend way too much time on, but it's an abomination. And, and finally, Deuteronomy 32, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods with abominations provoked him to anger other gods and idols are an abomination to god so babylon is the mother of harlots but she's bred literally thousands of churches that have sprung from her in addition we see that the world religions have a lot of influence from uh, christianity and from the bible uh, christianity is the largest religion uh, 32 percent islam second largest is very closely tied to, to the, the characters of the Bible. Islam is, is claims the adherence to Abraham. They, they recognize Jesus Christ as a prophet. Islam is, is from, but they, they come from Ishmael, the, the son of Keturah and Abraham, but, but they have a lot of relationship with the Bible and they have a lot of respect for the Bible and for, for the characters of the Bible. Hinduism also has a lot of loose ties to Christianity. It, it, it often talks about Jesus Christ. There's many that, that try to teach that Jesus Christ visited uh, India and all these type of things. And a lot of their writings, you know, recognize him as, as a God, but not obviously not the only God. Um, and, and also the New Age bases. Hinduism is a basis to the New Age. And the New Age crosses all type of religious boundaries. They dabble in Christianity in a very confusing way. Um, so world religions also have a lot of ties to, to Babylon. It's the Christian church, but the world religions have linkage to that as well. Okay, so let's move on. The kings of the earth. So Babylon commits fornication with the kings of the earth. And we, we see the passage here in Revelation 17 and 18. And it says, the woman which thou saw is that great city, which reigns over the kings of the earth. And that word reign there 
it, it should have really been translated holds, has a hold over the kings of the earth, has some control over them, and that's what we see today. Even today, the, 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 the most powerful, a lot of the powerful countries of the world have adherence to Christianity. And, and, and the, those leaders claim some type of allegiance to a Christian denomination. Um, and we see that the kings are of the earth. They're, 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 they're symbol, symbolic for leaders. So they're the leaders in the church, in the, in the, in the earth. They're, they could be political leaders, they could be religious leaders, or they could be civic leaders. So we see that the end time false Christian church, Babylon, will have control and the fornication is actually with the leaders. Because the leaders, people follow the leaders. The inhabitants of the earth are the ones that follow the, the culture, follow society, follow the laws. So, so Christ, Babylon doesn't, Babylon, the, the true church is to be independent. The true church is to be, they're pilgrims and strangers. They're like ambassadors for Christ. They're not to be involved with world politics. But we see today, and, and it'll be worse with the end time Christian church, they're heavily involved with politics. They're supporting political candidates. They're, they're out there politicking, and they're out there trying to take over society. Instead of being the voice crying in the wilderness, bringing forth the Bible, be, being different, you know, not, not going along with the ways of the world, but ultimately the church compromises and they support the evil leadership, and they justify the worldliness and the idolatry and the materialism, and it's all in the church too. It, it enters into the church, and even today we see that to a large degree, and it's going to get worse at the end-time Babylon, the end-time Christian church. It's going to be a very worldly, idolatrous church. Um, so let's move on in our study with the next slide. While the leaders of the world are committing fornication with Babylon, the rest of the earth's inhabitants is becoming drunk with the wine of that Babylon's fornication, the worldliness, the, the idolatry. Uh, we, we find um, in the passage of Revelation 17 again, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. For all, all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication. The great whore which did corrupt, the earth is being corrupted because of her fornication. The word drunk um, in the Bible, spiritually, it means to be not with it, not awake, spiritually intoxicated with worldliness and pleasures, unaware of God, not focused on the right thing, not filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we have to be spiritually alive and awake and, and, and understand the truth of God. We also see that the wine of the wrath of her fornication has to do with judgment. Th those people that are calling the name being a Christian, they're in the church, but they're, they're, they're not true Christians. They're, 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 they're into worldliness and idolatry. It's a judgment. It's, it's the fact that the church is worldly. It's a judgment on them because it's, 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 gonna, it's a taste or a foreshadow of the wrath of God. And we see that the, the earth is corrupted. It's decayed with sin due to deceitful lust, Ephesians 4.22. And we recall from a previous study that the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, that's what the Great Tribulation is going to be like when Babylon is flourishing. It's going to be about lawlessness. Everybody did what was right in their own eyes. The, the law of God no, the, no longer marry, it matters anymore. And we also see that the fornication of Babylon and the abomination, it, it's, it's, it's an abomination and it's filthy. And we find that in Revelation 17, 4, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And that's what, what happens when you worship Satan's kingdom. Fornication, again, it's the act of worldliness. It's, it's following after other gods and idols through idolatry, deception, and lawlessness. And abomination, literally, it means to be hated by God. When, you, when, when, we, when we salt ourselves away, and we're, we're following the things of the world. It's, it's something that's hated by God. And to be filthy means to be unclean. It's spiritually unclean, which is similar to demonic possession. It was always called an unclean spirit. So we see that following the ways of this world, being lo in love with the gods and idols of this world, it's, it's an abomination. It's hated by God, and it's, it's, it's a dirty, filthy behavior to be involved with. 
Okay, and we see Babylon has a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness. And a golden cup. When we see in Scripture a cup, we remember that Christ took the cup of, of God's judgment in our place. We see that, that God, at the end day, he, he has a cup of judgment. And we find there's some verses here to, 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 to if you want to look up Psalm 75, 8, for example. So this judgment, Babylon has a cup of judgment, but it's golden. It looks very valuable. It looks important, but it's really a judgment of one's spiritual condition. Worldliness looks good on the outside, but, but when, one, and, and when one that's in the church, one that uh, call, calls himself a Christian, takes forth of worldliness, it's a judgment. They, they get further blinded and they're, they're taken away from God. It's a form of judgment on that person in that they're not truly a Christian, even though they claim the name of Christ and they're in a church. And we see that the same thing happened at the time of Judah. The southern two tribes of Babylon was used as this golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations drank of her wine and therefore the nations are mad, Jeremiah 51.7. Babylon was a tool of God. Just like the end time Babylon church is a tool, it's separating the worldly non-Christians that are in the church from the true Christians that are, that are concerned and, 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 and about the, the worldliness of the church and how it's becoming full of idolatry. Okay, just a summary. Spiritual fornication, very simply, it's an abomination. It's a hated thing of worship and other gods and idols. And it's, it's all through the world today. It's the love of, of wisdom, the love of riches, the love of power. It's a judgment on those who are not Christians, but they're in the church. It's what they, they want to go after. And it's what's the end time Babylon, the end time church is going to be all about satisfying people's desires for those things, worldliness in the church. It's, it's already endemic in our society today, and, and the church is going that way very quickly, very quickly. Uh, next video by, is going to be part four, Babylon Scarlet Colored Beast. Please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll just close with the words of 1 John chapter 2, Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the, in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, and those are the things that are, are other gods and idols, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And we know that Satan is the god of this world. He's the prince and power of the air. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of the God abides forever and ever.